Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team and the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Okay, do you love your life? That is a question that millions of Americans are asking themselves right now. And because you have 40 million people unemployed, it is a great chance for people to reinvent themselves. To talk about that, a best-selling author, Dan Miller. Dan, thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely, my pleasure. Well, it's an honor to speak to you. I don't often get a chance to talk to New York Times best-selling authors who are celebrating 20 years of a best-selling book. Uh, we're going to put your book up on the screen, and and I got to brag about you, Dan, because you, th you, this is like a, a rookie uh, freak. You know, the the uh, the lightning never strikes uh, twice kind of event. You wrote a best-selling book your first time out. That's right. That's the way it unfolded. I, I was not an author. I was not looking to be an author. I was not looking for a publishing deal. I was simply teaching a Sunday school class and helping people through these inevitable career transitions that we're all confronted with. And people asked, started asking for material. I didn't have anything. And I put my rough notes together in a three ring binder with originally with two cassettes in there, Jeff. That goes back <laughs> away. Two cassettes. And I sold over $2 million worth of that little product. Then I had publishers knocking on my door saying, we've seen what you're doing. Why don't we do this in a traditional book? So they did, and that did become a New York Times bestseller very quickly. Wow. Well, that, that you, you inspire uh, every person out there who thinks that they may have a book because you, you too can become a Dan Miller uh, if you try and, and get a little bit of luck. Well, let's talk about your book, 48 Days to the, to the Work and Life You'll Love. You, um, this book is probably more relevant today than it was when you wrote it. You know, it almost looks like I was bright enough to think I wrote it for today. Uh, because nobody could have predicted what we're going through right now, but it certainly is fitting. And yeah, it has accelerated everything that we're doing pretty dramatically these last two months, because people having been forced away from their work really had time to take a look at it. Is this really, am I doing this because I really enjoy it or is it just the paycheck? And the byline on the very back of the book is work should be more than a paycheck. So, People are, are tuning into that message dramatically. Well, what, give some advice to my viewers. If they're, if they're watching right now and they're saying to themselves, okay, I've got I got laid off from this job, um, how do you know whether you should become an entrepreneur, go back to the old job? I mean, the old job can be comfortable, um, and being an entrepreneur is not for everyone. How, how do you know, Dan? Wow, that's a great question, and it, it really goes to the heart of my message, that being... 85% of the process of having a confidence of proper direction comes from looking inward first. We're very prone to just look at the guy down the street who discovered FBA fulfilled by Amazon and he's knocking it out of the park. Or somebody got a job in the space industry and they're doing well. So we look for external solutions that have worked for somebody else rather than what really is authentically us. But here's, here's the kind of irony. I would rather help you grow dandelions, Jeff, if that's your passion, rather than try to talk you into computer science because we know there are financial opportunities there. So you look at yourself. What are your unique skills and abilities? Your unique personality tendencies? How do you relate to other people? What kind of environments do you thrive in? Your passions, values, dreams. Those, from looking at those three broad areas, we can get a very clear focus. 
Then 15% of the process is looking at, okay, now what kind of work brings us together? If it's working for a traditional company and a job that's defined, fantastic, let's go after that. If you know you're not wired to do well in that kind of environment, the world is wide open with opportunities where you could do something where it puts you more in the driver's seat. That's yes. been a real popular trend in these last couple of months. People will say, I'm tired of being vulnerable like this. I want to do something where I am more in the driver's seat. And uh, you, uh, during good times when we're not social distancing and, and you can travel and speak, you are a uh, prolific speaker. Uh, how, how often do you speak, Dan? Well, it's not something that I look to do a lot. It's something that I enjoy, but I look for six or eight engagements a year. I'm not a fan of being on airplanes and you know living out of hotels. I love the environment that I have right here at home where I work and it's so easy to connect virtually, that's my preferred way of communicating. But I, I, it's, it's, it's a rush to be on stage in front of a crowd, no doubt about it. Well, we're gonna roll some video of you speaking. When you uh, do speak, What um, this is a shot of you speaking to 3,000 people in Nashville. That's a, that's a big audience. Uh, what do you typically speak about, Dan? You know, it really, this core message so resonates with people. Just. How has God uniquely gifted me? Is there really something that only I can do? It lends to the idea of finding your zone of genius. A lot of people are operating in areas of incompetence or areas of excellence and even competence, things they do well, but it doesn't really set you apart from the crowd. What I encourage people to do is to look for what is that single thing, the one or two things that really are unique about you, moving into what we call your zone of genius. So I have a lot of opportunities to address that. Are you uh, are you finding fans among the millennials because I, and the Gen Zs? I, I think you would. Uh, you know, my generation. I'm a boomer. Uh, the message was pretty much, you know, go go to work and life is not a bowl of cherries. And <laughs> and the millennials and the Gen Zs, they're really about uh, meaningful work. Uh, are you finding a new fan base? You know, I'm really fortunate in that because I've been around a while. <laughs> so you would think my audience is perhaps peers of mine, but on, on, we do some group cruises as well. On our last cruise, 50% of our attendees were under 30 years old. So we do have a strong base, audience base in the millennials and even the y younger than that. Yep, they're, they're not content to do what mom and dad did, work for a company for 20 years and then show up one morning and they say, clean out your desk, we don't need you anymore. They're saying, what can I do that not only connects with my passion, but also gives me more immunity from these volatile changes that we're seeing in the workplace. And I know that uh, you're also a very popular coach. So executives uh, will hire you to give them some guidance if they're at a crossroads? Yes, and I'll tell you my favorite kind of client. It's somebody who's 47 years old, has a specialized degree. So an attorney, physician, dentist, engineer, pastor, who are from all external views, looks like they're doing fine. And yet they say, you know, this isn't it. I'm living somebody else's dream, not my own. So those, by virtue of the fact that they do have those professional degrees, often they're used to extraordinary income. So it's not a matter of just polishing the resume and going and getting another position. We have to come up with a really creative life plan for them. That's what energizes me. Yeah, so more than the corporate side, those are the people that really get my attention. Tell me about 48 days. Is there something magic about 48 days? <laughs> there is something magic, but I'd also like to tell you that there was something scientific about developing that, and it wasn't that way at all. I mean, I'm an entrepreneur from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. Never had a job where I got a paycheck and always just followed ideas. But I was frustrated in working with people who said, gee, my life sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. So we'd map out a clear plan of action to take them into a new season of life. And then I see them a year later and they hadn't done anything. You know, they're waiting to pay the mortgage off, gee, to finish another degree, to get that kids out of high school. They're waiting until all the lights are green to leave the dock. I'm saying there's got to be a timeline to get people to make dramatic change in a significant period of time. And this was back when 48 Hours was becoming popular as a TV show. So I just thought, Rather than 30, 60, 90, 120, which are even numbers that don't get our attention, 48. People would ask, why 48? And they do. 
So I did it just as a marketing lark. I had no idea it was going to stick around as long. But 48 days to the up. And when I did, it was like somebody threw gasoline on everything that I was doing. People immediately said, you mean I really can change my life in 48 days? It was my response then and now. Is, yes, you can if you create a plan and act on it. So I work with people and I require action. If I work with somebody and on day 49, they're still doing what they were doing, that's fine. I still love them as a friend, that's fine. But I'm moving on because I move with people that take action. And 48 days is enough time to assess where you are, get the advice and opinion of brilliant people around you, choose three or four options, do a little bit more research, choose the best one and act. And it doesn't matter if it relates to what kind of car to buy, where to go to school, where to buy a house, where to go to church, or what job or business to start. You can do that in 48 days. Wow. Amen. You, you sound like you have a little preacher in you. Do, any uh, any <laughs> clergy in the family? Oh, my dad was a pastor. Really? I, I, that's what I grew up in. My dad was a pastor. I'm very comfortable in church settings. A lot of times there's um, an unhelpful theology that kind of overlays, especially when it comes to financial success. People really think money is the root of all evil, which is not true. But so I have a lot of opportunity in that space to help people kind of grow through their limitations, work through those upper limit challenges that are holding them back from the success that's readily available. Wow. Well, I love your ministry, Dan. We're going to put your website up on the screen, and then I want to give you a chance to uh, talk about a compelling offer for the Jeff Crilly viewers out there. 48days.com is your website. And uh, go ahead, Dan. The floor is yours. All right. Sure. We've got a marvelous quiz that we just developed. This is brand new. 20 questions that will really help you identify how close are you to the work and life you love. So it's free. And if you go to 48days.com slash Jeff Crilly, it'll take you right there. Some special offers for your listeners. But that quiz is something I'm really excited about. Love to have people take, take advantage of that. Absolutely. Well, Dan, you have been an amazing guest. We'll absolutely have to have you back again soon. Um, thank you. Absolutely. My pleasure.